All right, hey YouTube, just gonna show you my CBRN kit here, my personal CBRN kit. So without delay, let's get to this video. Okay, so first let's start with the bag. This is a seal line 30 liter dry bag. It's got a roll top dry bag. The idea behind this being that I wanted a bag that can keep my contents safe from any kind of water chemicals or particulates. So this does a pretty decent job of doing that. Uh, philosophy for this bag is, this is a CBRN protection kit for one person. And if you were to ever find yourself in a situation where you're concerned about uh, harmful particulates in the air, chemicals, this would provide you the basic personal protection as well as a way to harden whatever structure you're in to hopefully uh, outlast that situation. So let's get to the contents. I'm gonna put this off the table and then show you the contents as I pull them out. So let's get to it. All right, so for the first thing I keep in the top of the bag is my gas mask and pouch. This is a Blackhawk gas mask pouch. Uh, not super huge, but works for what I need it for. And inside, I keep two of these Mira Safety gas mask canisters, sealed. Uh, they're advertised to have a 20 year shelf life and they protect against a large number of CBRN type uh, contaminants, chemicals, aerosols, what have you. Um, so it's good to have two of those sealed up. And then my gas mask is the SGE 300 BB. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is the 400-3. So this is um, the one, the thing I liked about this gas mask is that the rubber is a butyl rubber. So it's supposed to protect against corrosive type chemicals. Um, it does have three gas mask um, inputs here, so threaded inputs, so one, two, three. Um, I would use one or two just to provide me ease of respiration uh, if I'm exerting myself. And then it also does have a kit that you can put a, a drinking straw in the mask itself. I'm not, not a huge fan of that, but this is, works for what I need it for. It's very comfortable, provides a lot of visibility, and it, it fits my face and provides a very good airtight seal. So that is my gas mask as well as the canisters. And then lastly in here, similar to what I've shown you in the past with my messenger bag, my EDC messenger bag, I do have a portable dosimeter. So a little way to detect radiation in the environment and let you know when the levels have gone above the safe levels, background levels. So this is Mira Safety, uh, uses little tiny uh, 1.5 volt batteries which I have a ton of extra batteries here if I need to be using this for a prolonged period of time. Um, it has a low alarm, audible alarm, and um, yeah, so it's good to always have a way to measure radiation in, in your environment. I think the biggest thing that would happen if, God forbid, there was a some type of uh, power station meltdown or a, a bomb missile goes off, is people would panic and they try to flee the city that's probably one of the worst things you can do in that kind of situation. Um, stay put, you're safer in a building than on the road in a car. Um, but having the ability to measure the radiation in your immediate surroundings is going to be huge because if you're, if it's a safe level, then you can stay put for upwards of a week, which is probably then safe to come outside depending on the situation, but always good to have a dosimeter as well as here's the batteries here. 1.5 volt batteries. I have a bunch of them. And then also important to have potassium iodide. These are the uh, IOSAT. This particular one is really hard to find now. Everyone's buying them up because of the current events happening in the world. Um, but the idea behind this is you take one every 24 hours and it helps your thyroid to protect against any kind of radioactive iodine in the environment. So um, super important if you're ever in a situation where you need to use it and it could protect you against uh, long-term issues, cancers, whatnot. So that's my uh, gas mask. All right, next I have uh, several of these replacement gas mask canisters. So these are by Maestel Safety, uh, CBRN as well, and they are still within their expiration date. Also, I have two more of the Mura Safety. So four, four extra total, um, and then two in the bag, so six and I think basically you would uh, just replace them when it becomes hard to breathe, meaning that the filter is uh, used up 
and God forbid, hopefully we never have to use all of these, but it is good to have more than, than you need. All right, next I have a Mira Safety. This is called their Haz Suit. It's basically just a protective coverall type suit uh, with elastic uh, enclosures around the wrist and ankles, as well as a hood. And this protects against a variety of chemicals and particulates, keeping them off your person. Um, they make these in a variety of different sizes for children on up to a large adults. And then also this is for uh, wrapping the ankles and wrists over the gloves and protective boot covers to prevent any kind of particulates, chemicals from getting in that direction. All right, next I have a little uh, extra items here. This is for if you're with somebody and you're in a bad situation where you're trying to protect yourself from stuff in the air. I have three of these 3M N95 masks as well as a pair of swimming goggles. So this is something you can loan out to somebody or for whatever reason, if you don't have your gas mask, to prevent any kind of chemical particularly to get into your eyes, nose, or mouth. Um, worst thing you want to do if there is a radiation in the air is breathe in dust particles because then that gets in your lungs and that's what can cause long-term cancer. So just a way to protect your eyes and your respiration from contamination. Okay, next I have some rubber gloves. I have two pairs. This is a large size for me. Um, and the idea is you would wear these over top your mirror safety has suit and then you would duct tape the wrist so you could keep any kind of chemical or particulate out. These are advertised to protect against a multitude of chemicals. Uh, but the biggest thing is just trying to keep bad things off of your hands, off of you, so that when you do decon and go back into wherever you are sheltering down, uh, that you're not bringing contamination in with you. All right, next, uh, have these DuPont Tyvek boot covers. So similar with the rubber gloves, just a way to keep dust, contamination, from getting on your boots or shoes, whatever you're wearing. Uh, these are not gonna last forever, but it will if you're trying to just go to your car or affect a rescue or go outside your um, protective zone briefly, this will help you to keep from getting dust and chemicals and other contaminants on your footwear. All right, so next all these uh, items kind of go together. So I have two of these plastic painters drop cloths. One is a heavy 2M, 2 mil, one is a medium 1 mil. And they're about, this one is a 10 feet by 20 feet and then 9 feet by 12 feet. As well as I have a roll of Gorilla Tape as well as a utility knife to cut the plastic. So the idea behind this is if you're home or in a building when something happens and you're trying to protect yourself and others from contamination, you can cover sliding glass doors, front doors, air vents, whatever you think might be a avenue for dust and particulate and radiation to get into your enclosure. You can then tape off pieces of plastic over those things to protect your immediate environment and then uh, hunker down and monitor the environment with your dosimeter just to make sure that your environment is uh, remaining clear of dangerous levels of radiation. So uh, very cheap, just ways to quickly create a, a somewhat air proof shelter to prevent stuff from getting in. And then once you have that in place, you can hunker down until the outside environment has cleared, uh, depending on what the situation is. All right, and last, I just have another, uh, this is just a coverall. This is DuPont Tykem 4000 coveralls. Likewise with the, uh, the goggles and the N95 masks, if you're with somebody else and you need to provide them a basic level of protection, you know how a redundant suit you can wear. Or if you know your, your main line, your mirror safety has to develops a hole or breaks down or whatever, you have an alternative. So redundancy is key. This kit is designed for one person, but you do have the ability to stretch it to two people uh, if the situation permits. And I recommend everyone in your household or in your immediate group, have a kit like this. If the situation warrants, you now have protection against getting uh, 
contaminated. And then just lastly here, I'll talk about um, if you are in a situation like that where you're trying to prevent any kind of contamination from getting inside your residence or your living, your living quarters, what you would want to do is set up a little contamination zone where you have a, the ability to wash someone off with some water, uh, dust, just heavy particulates where they can then disrobe from their protective equipment and then come into the living quarters and they're not bringing all that contamination in. So this is just my personal take on the CBRN kit. A lot of this stuff is not super cheap, but it's also something if you ever had to use it, you would be very thankful. And um, I'll post links for the things here as much as I can below. Um, the Amazon affiliate links help me out, help me grow the channel. So if you can click on those, purchase your items through the affiliate links, that would help me out greatly. And please stay tuned for more and more videos and like and subscribe. Thank you.